Welcome to Hey Grill Hey, I'm Susie Bullock and today I'm teaching you how to make homemade teriyaki beef jerky. Let's get started. First step for our homemade teriyaki jerky is to work on our aromatics. I'm gonna be slicing up a one inch piece of ginger, skin on is fine, just into little medallions. And then four cloves of garlic. I just use the broad side of my knife and the heel of my hand to smash it. Peel off the skin. And just give these a rough chop. We don't want them to really stick to the meat itself, but we want to add as much garlic flavor as we can. Get the ginger and the garlic added to a gallon zip top bag. I like to use the zip top bags for marinating because it holds everything and I can ensure that the marinade gets on every piece of the meat. To our garlic and ginger, we're going to add one cup of soy sauce, a quarter cup of rice vinegar, or a little bit of tang, a half a cup of dark brown sugar, and if you don't like yours quite as sweet, you can cut the amount of sugar in half. I really like a sweet teriyaki jerky though. Next is a tablespoon of sesame oil, a teaspoon of black pepper, and then a tablespoon of sesame seeds. Again, this is one that's optional, but I think it adds a lot visually Zip the top closed and give that a nice mix. Oh, it smells awesome already. From there, you're good to add in your beef or an additional optional step is to add one teaspoon of pink curing salt, also called Prague powder or Instacure number one. This is different than Himalayan pink salt. This is a nitrate based salt. So it actually cures the meat and extends its shelf life. So using a teaspoon uh, of this pink salt, this is Instacure number one, will extend the shelf life of your jerky so that it'll last shelf stable up to six weeks if you can make it that long before eating it. Without the Instacure, it will last two weeks. Just keep the jerky in your refrigerator. That one more mix. Now it's time to add your beef. I am using about two pounds of eye of round roast. You can use really any roast that has a little bit of intramuscular fat. I found that top rounds, also labeled London broils work great. I've heard of people using flank steaks, um, even brisket flats sliced thin. As long as you can get it pretty thin so that it'll dry out evenly, you're good to go. I have my butcher slice these for me because I don't have a great meat slicer at home and it's kind of tiring using a knife. Uh, you can do that too. So go to your butcher, grab the roast that you like, take it up to the counter, ask him to slice it for you, tell him you're making jerky and have him set his dial to a two and that'll give you the perfect thickness. I'm slicing mine against the grain because I like those short little bites that are really easy to chew. If you want those longer strands that pull apart, definitely have them cut it with the grain and that'll give you those long chewy strands. This goes directly into our marinade. Zip it tight. This first step, you can leave the air in there so that the liquid has a chance to get around each piece. Break it up so that your pieces of sliced meat aren't stuck together. Massage it really good. Separate each of those pieces. Once you've got it massaged really well, open up a corner, press out as much additional air as you can. And then you're good to go. Keep this in the fridge overnight, at least eight hours. You can push it 
up to 24, even 48 hours. Just know the longer you go, the saltier it'll be. I like to put this on a plate or in a nine by 13 pan so that I don't have to deal with any drips or mess in my refrigerator. You're good to go. Our teriyaki jerky has been marinating in the fridge overnight. It's time for the next step. Pull your meat one piece at a time out of the bag and set it on some paper towels. I have mine on a cookie sheet to catch any excess liquid. Make sure to lay them flat. What we're going to do, make sure you shake off any excess like ginger or garlic pieces also, is press this between pieces of paper towels. What this will do is dry any extra liquid off the outside. It'll dry out more evenly in the smoker or dehydrator that way. And it also dries a little quicker. All the jerky's out. At this point, you can discard the marinade. Just zip it up, toss it away. Make sure to get that top layer pressed and dried. And then we're ready to start dehydrating. There are three different ways that you can dehydrate. You can use a smoker, which is what I'm gonna be using. You can use your oven or you can use your dehydrator. If you're dehydrating in a regular dehydrator, just follow your manufacturer's instructions. If you're doing it on the smoker or in the oven, keep your temperatures between 160 and 180 degrees. In a smoker, all the moisture is going to evaporate and the smoke will really help in the drying process. If you're doing it in an oven, stick a wooden spoon in the door. This will allow all of that moisture to escape and dry the jerky. On any of the cooking options in a smoker or in a dehydrator, you need to have your jerky laid out either directly on the grill grates or directly on the dehydrator trays so that the air can circulate all the way around. In your oven, put them on a cooling rack just like this one so that the air can access every piece of your jerky. Now on my smoker, I am using an apple or a cherry wood. I really like the sweeter fruit woods with this teriyaki jerky. I think it adds a lot. I would stay away from really strong woods like mesquite or oak. I think it can overwhelm. So let's go. The reason that we put our jerky in a zip top bag is to allow some of that heat and moisture that's left over after smoking to kind of steam in the bag itself. So don't close it off, put it in the bag, set it on your counter, kind of let that steam evaporate. And then once it's cooled to room temperature, seal it up and that's it. You're good to go. Because we put the curing salt in, there's no need for us to refrigerate. That'll, this will last at room temperature anywhere between two to six weeks, but honestly, we've never made it that far with homemade jerky because it is so good. I hope you guys love this homemade teriyaki jerky recipe. My favorite way to eat it is honestly, when it's still just a little bit warm, straight off the smoker. It's really bendy and really chewy and pliable. Mm. And this stuff is so good. You get the ginger and the garlic and the soy. It's not too sweet. So if you're one that really likes that sticky sweet teriyaki, you could even double the sugar in this and it would definitely bring up the sweet factor, but the way that it is, that's some pretty good stuff. Hope you guys love this one. If you guys give this one a try, let me know in the comment section. I would love it if you would like this video. Leave us some comments and subscribe. We're putting out new grilling and barbecue recipes every single week and I want you to be the first to know about it.